The fundamental transformation of how the world works. I think we're going to see a lot more innovation, and that's something that's been lacking in the energy sector for a long time. The issue with existing batteries is that they suck. They're really horrible. With cars like these, luxury US electric vehicle brand Tesla is challenging the old fossil fuel burning automotive industry. But now, they're taking that challenge to a new industry, aiming to disrupt a sector that's responsible for 72% of Australia's greenhouse gas emissions. My name is Andrew. In my family, there's wife and two kids. Uh, we usually spend about $3,200 each year on electricity. Today is installation day for one of Australia's first families to buy Tesla's new Powerwall home battery storage system. I also teach economics and so I'm interested in, in how the electricity market works as a whole. So I think if we move towards uh, energy storage uh, at the place of consumption of people's homes, then it helps to smooth out the load on the network and I think that's better for the network as a whole and hopefully brings down costs for everyone over the long term. He's one of hundreds of customers who joined the waiting list to buy a solar panel and battery package from energy retailer Origin Energy, one of several on-sellers chosen by Tesla. Powerwall takes the energy that you produce during the day from your solar, stores it, and then you're able to use that power from the Powerwall at peak times of use, which is at night time. Battery storage is the game changer in Australia's energy market. Before batteries, solar panels worked only when the sun came out. Now, being able to store power will mean consumers can be self-sufficient and may find no use for the electricity grid. It's very different to Tesla's. Brisbane's All Grid Energy is an Indigenous-owned solar storage system which also uses battery storage. You can get a bigger system for the same price, which means you save more money. It's a trend that has the energy companies worried, and they are doing everything they can to be part of the home battery revolution. The energy industry is evolving, and it's important for us at Origin to evolve with it. If we saw wholesale defection by some consumers from the grid and the rest left to carry it, that would be an interesting challenge. It's what's called the death spiral, in which a smaller and smaller of consumers, arguably those on low incomes, are left to carry the cost of the grid. But the onset of battery storage may not be the death knell for the electricity grid. Pragmatic homeowners seeing a near-term future on the grid may use their newly acquired battery storage more strategically. That's where ACT-based software startup Reposit comes in. Reposit allows people to trade their energy directly on the wholesale market, um, effectively acting like a mini power station in everybody's backyard. Reposit is banking on consumers remaining connected to the grid, but using it in a different way. The opportunity here is to actually leverage the grid for what it's useful for, and that's in trading power between lots of different uh, generators and consumers, uh, and in so doing actually create new opportunities for how energy can be generated, stored and consumed. You're going to wait for the kind of opportunity to get underneath it. It cost Andrew Hingston more than $16,000 for his mini power station. I think I can get a return on each dollar invested of more than 10% per annum tax-free, which is a good investment return. But according to consumer magazine Choice, it's a long-term investment, not without its risks. Best case scenario here is a payback time of 20 years plus, and that's with everything optimised, with you offsetting your off-peak usage through solar panels, charging the battery, feeding a bit back into the grid, and then drawing on that battery at night. So it really is a long-term investment. Against that, you want to weigh up the fact we're seeing 10-year warranties on these products. So if you're looking at a return on investment of 20, 23 years, and the warranty's only 10, you're going to be exposed for a significant period there if something goes wrong. Andrew Hingston thinks it's worth the cost. The question is, who bears the bigger cost if the home energy trend continues? 
The interesting question arises as to what happens in your street if someone actually does decide, even if it might not be the most financially attractive thing to do, disconnect from that grid. Who pays for that grid that's still there? It doesn't go away. Does the energy company write it off? I would like to think that governments find a way that they don't have to bail these businesses out. Or does the rest of the consumers in your street, including you, pay for that system that was installed to supply all of the houses in your street? That's a conundrum that hasn't been solved yet.